Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today we have a centrifugal pump. This is a 15 inch centrifugal pump. And uh, uh, Flow Serve is the brand name on, on this pump here. Um, it's not too much different from any of them, uh, really. They, they all have basic parts and components. And our basic job is to go ahead and replace the mechanical seals and the bearings uh, in, on this rotating unit. Get it ready to go back into service. This is for one of the uh, water districts here on the, on the Cape. And we're trying to do a quick turnaround because this is the only pump they have. And uh, so we're getting down. We're going to start pulling everything apart. And we're kind of starting to look into the book here. And uh, we will be checking wearing clearances and a couple other things that I want to point out on a pump. Um, so, and I'm going to dig out some photographs of some old pumps that I've done some work on before. We're going to kind of mix that in on this little repair. Alright, so we're going to get our puller set up on the end here and uh, start uh, getting the sections disassembled and laid out on our table. Oh, by the way, this is the, uh, the wood stove. We pull the stack, we seal that off, we put this back and we put a piece of plywood on here and it gives us a little workbench. And when you have an individual project like this, it is kind of handy. So um, this is what we're using it for today. All right, we're supporting this uh, rod here with the wrench so that we don't spin this into the center on the end of uh, the shaft. So many mechanics will sit there and twist this shaft holding this nut right here uh, because it seems easier. Um, but in the rotation of this, you mess up that center right in the in the pump. Now there's also there's a couple cups that put on there, and there's a couple of these tips here that swivel. But as long as you don't rotate it, you're going to be fine. And the bearing is letting the whole thing turn, so that's that's cool. That'll work. And she's not on there that hard. She's coming. She's walking off as we speak. Right now, and uh, well, it doesn't want to play out that way, but I thought it would. We're just going to look at that bearing diameter right now and uh, it looks like it was making good contact and we're just kind of looking at this bearing here. It had a good press on there. It's uh... Alright, here's the retainer plate, the back side of the bearing. That's where it pushes that into the housing. He's got the gaskets. We don't have to worry about gaskets. Alright. Keep these in an order here. Rubber slinger ring. This is just in case you have water spraying out of your seals, uh, that it directs it outward and not into the bearing. Um, it's just safety factor, basically. All right, here's the gland in gland uh, cap for the dripless seal and. Oh man, does that look like doo-doo. Right there is the mating surface right there. There's, uh, there's the O-ring that seals the cap. And this surface right here mates against the rotating unit. And this is spring-loaded here. Alright, and uh, springs are still moving and that, that piece is still flexing there. But uh, <laughs> you, you can see that. And then uh, this has got a, a water port and uh, how plugged up that is right there. That'll be digged out. Alright, so we got a little bit of work to do on that. Now we gotta take a look at this rotating unit here. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at one of these in a box here. See what a new one looks like. This is John Crane seals. They're, they're a popular brand. Okay, that is just the seal, not the lock collar. So I, 
the uh, you don't even want to touch those with your hands okay you don't want the oil on there so I'm putting them right back in there I don't know if we got collars in here or not I definitely don't see one in the box all right we got the we got that first, this collar broke loose here. This is all just rubber, but that's what we're fighting is just rubber here. Um, this piece right here was so uh, corroded up. This is a bronze uh, little sleeve right here, spring load. And then uh, this rubber is just taking a little bit of time to come off of here. But we don't want to damage none of the sleeve here because it's, uh, you know, we're going to be polishing all this up and putting it all back together. So we're just drawing all that over the all of this this corrosion and gunk that's all stuck up in here and uh, We won't have to pull that rusty sleeve off of there. I don't know if he's gonna want to replace that or not, but uh, Anyway, there's the uh, There's the backup for that seal there We'll probably spin this in the lathe and polish it up, but we'll hit a wire wheel on here This seal does feel like it has some wear in here. Um, you know, it all depends on how how much they want to rebuild, and basically they're just asking us to replace these seals and these bearings, and they want to get this back in line. Um, so, you know, how much they want to shortcut, we'll see, and uh, we'll take a measurement on these. It's supposed to be twice uh, twice the <coughs> clearance as the book calls out, and they're uh, little. Uh, glove box manual for this thing says that that's supposed to be nine so 18 would be uh, replace all right we switched from the drive side of the pump to the back side of the pump or the cap side um, and this is this is actually where the thrust of the impeller and shaft is all maintained is on this pulley right or I mean on this bearing right here so this has got a uh, W nut and washer here and, and it's got a lock tang so we're going ahead and uh, just bringing that up out of the way and then you always got you got to check all of them that one wasn't smashed in that one doesn't have one that one all right so now we need a spanner wrench to take that off Alright, uh, this is just a Williams spanner wrench. I've had this ever since at shipyards, and this is kind of a, a universal one. It's, uh, uh, and I've also, I've radiused it because sometimes you're hitting, and this is a slot application here, but sometimes you're slipping them into a hole that's in a sleeve. Alright, and we're just going to bring that loose. And we'll actually have to use it to turn it as well all right I'm gonna we'll put those in order now this lock ring see that slot right there it has an inner tang that actually sits into that slot and then this grabs on the outside now this is a W6 here. That's just the size uh, in the... Alright. We're going to get the other puller set up on this and um, we're going to pull this out. Now I want you to note that right here, they've already mushroomed this center right here. I can see that raised up there. Um, we got grease and stuff in here, but you know, that's... <laughs> A machinist has to reclaim those if he needs to do any machine work to that shaft. That's why you need to not damage those center holes on the end of the shaft. They're a tool for the machinist. 
All right, we're going to use a. We're we're actually going. We're going to give this the first attempt. We know we have another puller like we had on the other side, and it will come off. Uh, but this is a Ponzi Lock three uh, prong puller, and the reason why they call it a Ponzi Lock is it actually has an outside shell that actually pushes equally on all three of these and kind of really holds the three prongs on the outside of the bearing. Uh, not necessarily that you have to clamp that thing on down. In fact, sometimes you got to leave it a little bit because you want the support on the outside of your bearing there. Uh, this also has a swivel head right here in the middle so that when you crank this in, um, you're not spinning it into the center itself. Uh, it'll rotate here instead of there. Alright, and this one here you just hold it and then rotate it. And I just felt it come loose. bearing cover and there again they got uh, these gaskets um, they'll put those on down in place when they assemble this and the rubber slinger ring and then the backup uh, stationary seal surface right there um, and of course the o-ring was come out of there and we'll have to be cleaning those up a little bit and we'll press those out and there again now this water jag is not clogged as much as that the other side was but those need to be clear and open as well all right we're going to put a little bit of zep in here we're going to see if we can This one doesn't seem to be as bad as the other one. have to be tapped off as well. bunch of goo. Alright, and that's uh, about the same condition right there. Oh. You can see there's two stainless steel set screws right there that lock that sleeve on. And that sleeve is from there to there. This is the sleeve that holds the impeller. And these are adjusted and center of the impeller in the housing as well. Next we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a measurement on the uh, wear rings. Uh, if they're exceeding, we want to give them a call and let them know that they are exceeding uh, with our findings. We're going to the thrust side here first. Okay, and, uh, and we're going to go ahead and we're 
just going to go for high and low um, on here. And we already got the uh, inside micrometer put together here with a little sleeve because we're we're over the half inch. So you go from the nominal inch to oh, up to a half inch without the spacer. Then you add the spacer. Then you go in there. All right. Uh, so we got five eight eighty. 5880 and always double check it with your outside micrometer because that's what you're going to be checking the impeller whether they're both calibrated or both whether they're both right you kind of you can see that right here and uh, this mic and this inside mic about one thousandths difference right now all right so we're going to search and look for high and low Pretty good sign when uh, your your ring is uh, round or pretty close to being round. It's a good sign in a pump that the impeller uh, line and the rings were setting in uh, in sync, pretty close. All right, so we got. So we're about eight seven seven to eight zero. All right, now on the ring. Eight thirty-two. Eight thirty. We're just gonna call it eight thirty-two because uh, I don't have enough difference there. All right. We've uh, we pulled the. Uh, the thrust side ring off and uh, we went ahead and mic'd it up uh, a couple different places on the ID of the ring there and we come up with 5877 uh, to 5880 and the ring or the uh, impeller uh, diameter the male uh, we got it like 8532 so we took and uh, subtract the uh, 5.880 uh, minus 5.3, oh, excuse me, 5.880 minus 5.832 equals 48 thousandths, okay? In the recommended manual here, it, uh, it states, Renewal clearance, as where uh, takes place between the impeller ring and casing ring, uh, the efficient over, overall efficiency of the pump will, will, will decrease, okay? Radial clearance detailed in section 3.4.2 has doubled. Um, to maintain optimum efficiency is when recommended that rings be replaced and the impeller re renovated when the radial clearance detail on section 3.4.2 has doubled and uh, in that uh, figure here 3.4.2 we got nine thousandths for this pump this is a 5LR 15 15 inch pump and that's nine thousand so a double is 18 all right so if we took 40 <laughs> and divided by 18 and uh, it it's basically 2.6 times uh, worn out. <clears throat> okay, so we've uh, re-recorded uh, what our wear ring clearance is here, um, just to take note, okay? Um, we've been informed that uh, this pump is going to be taken out of service, and basically all they want right now is to 
um, bare minimum uh, get the new components in and uh, give it back to them so they can get it back online and in service I guess this pump is going to be called out for a replacement here soon <clears throat> so we're putting away our instruments because <laughs> we don't need to concern ourselves with anything in this pump except for going back together clean now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull out uh, well we got we got a pretty rusty uh, o-ring here and uh, we're going to get in here and press out these sections of the seals and mechanically uh, wire a wheel clean and possibly open up the port to let more water in here uh, and get the things back assembled okay these were unrecognizable as far as being pressed in and out of there and I mean you can really see there is no smooth material in there I mean if we get an o-ring seal in there it's going to be lucky uh, and you can see how torn up that o-ring is right in there and uh, I'll get a couple uh, still shots of that and we're getting ready uh, now this was the good one and uh, you can see that's that surface right there same thing I'll hit it with the needle gun and uh, inside and outside so I can knock most of that rust scale off of there before I bust loose the ring um, and then uh, all we can do is a wire wheel we don't have a sandblast or anything else in this uh, in, in my shop here right now Alright, just so uh, you can see, you can't really tell or distinguish the seal ring from the housing or the casting. Now this is this is the good one. This one here you can really you can really see it a lot better than Alright, we're gonna press it out now. We're just kind of cleaning up this area right this the uh, mechanical seal area uh, so that they'll function and they slide and we can uh, uh, get them into place and then we're just going to clean the rest of the uh, shaft up right here we're going to flip it and we're going to do the other side there uh, and we can then this this section here is ready to reassemble uh, we're, we're not asked to do any repair just to change the mechanical seal and the bearings so that's what we're doing <laughs> size looks like wrapping around looks like they might have spun in there at one time or another uh, so you know that's as far as we can guarantee a cleanup on that and uh, you know, we do have to go on down here <laughs>
Okay. Let's get it out of here. Get it back over in the rack. Okay, this hole coming in from the uh, water jacket uh, where you have positive flow of water flowing in around your seal. Um, I'm going ahead and I'm drilling that rust out of there. Until I get some flow here. Alright, I don't know if I get, if I might have to pull that apart or what, but... I'm not getting any flow out of that. <laughs> All right, let's go put it in a vise, and we're going to take this off of here, and we're going to get a look down in there. Um, pretty sad. Okay, we're just marking this. We know that this comes off this direction here. All right, and we got to pull this off of here, though, because we got to clean. we got to get something in there. That's friggin' locked up solid. <laughs> well, I don't know. A uh, whole bunch of good shit in there, huh? Oh, we need, oh, we just want to see if we can get down in here by hand, get this freed up. Without breaking this, you know, basically he said just. Okay. We took the wire wheel, we cleaned up uh, the, the rough stuff there, and uh, we took the uh, bench grinder wire wheel and we went around this groove, and we're just kind of like peeling out a little bit more rust uh, stuff down in here so that we got a good clean surface for the O-ring. These pieces really should be replaced, but uh, they just, they have a replacement for this pump evidently, and uh, they just want it back together. Right, that's about the best we can do with that. The rest of it's just corroded. It's just gone. Alright, uh, we're going back together with this and we're going to slide that spring on. Then the next thing is this retainer there. Then this has got a rubber, this is the rubber seal on this surface right here. And we need to have, we need to have, we put it on here because as we push it here, we don't want it to come in on this face over here. Okay, so what we do is we set this down and we go ahead and we we really lube this up good we don't we don't want uh we don't want to have any dry spots in here and uh all right we wipe off the excess all right and we wipe and we clean our hands now we even if uh i mean you don't really want to touch that surface with any of your fingers or anything so you try to grab it on the outside here all right, and push it on just like that. All right, oh. I use my thumbnails and I'm holding in on the outside of that. All right, that's as it's, it's gonna do what it wants to do. 
All right, now this is the ring that goes in this housing here, okay? And that has an O-ring on there. So we need to coat this surface up here because this O-ring wants to squeeze into there. Now this casting is all corroded and pit and chewed up. And, but I, right where that O-ring goes, it has a pretty good line. Now there was silicone and everything else in there, but silicone is not going to do it. It's going to make the system uh, worse. Now I see a little light smear on here anyway. After we have this in here, we're going to wipe this down with acetone so we make sure we have no uh, uh, fingerprints and stuff. This was a little cardboard on there that kind of works out good. Put a little surface right here if we have to push this in. But we're going to go ahead and Vaseline or Super Lube this bore up. And uh, we got an O-ring in here, but we can go ahead and take that out for right now until we get this in here. All right, here again. Wipe and clean off the hands. Around the outside, a little extra off of here, like that. All right, we're gonna we're gonna set this right in here. All right, we're gonna go get a diameter that's gonna push that in there. All right. We got that laying in there. We got that piece of uh, paper, and here's something that we can push down on here. All right, and that's pushed down inside there. All right, take a little acetone and make sure that we got the seal clean. Pretty hard to do. Let's get one motion all the way around. Finally, we got a nice clean surface on there. You don't want anything between the ceramic and the seal ring, the polished surface there. All right, so we baby this on here. All right. Now, we're going to clean off this slinger ring because this fits tight to the shaft and it's going to kind of hold that together there. And we can get the rest of this side assembly, assembled here. Alright. He's got to transport this and we want to make sure that this doesn't uh, travel on him. give him some okay that's pretty nice there all right we are all set on this side here except for the bearing we're gonna go assemble that side there and get it up to the same spot and then we'll just put we, we got we're gonna warm the two bearings and we're gonna slip those on We didn't even hardly get any color to it, but we, we know this this one here fit pretty good. There we go. All right. All right. We'll go prep uh, this other one here. All right. And Now we uh, let's rotate this around. Okay, I can see it there. A washer and a 
Put on the nut. We're gonna let this cool down though. You never want to uh, put a nut down, lock it while it's hot. Because when it cools down, it will leave the nut uh, and become sloppy. And then you'll have clearance in there. torque it to the next uh, locking position and then we're gonna secure the lock and uh, we'll be done with this uh, project now back in my day in the, uh, in, the in the yards the shipyards and doing naval ship repair I've had uh, the occasional pump uh, come into my hands line boring uh, completely rebuilding uh, I've ripped them out. I've test run them. I, you know, every aspect of pumps on naval uh, repair, I, I pretty well partake into it. Um, I do have a small collection of photos, and here they are. about all I have for uh, <laughs> pumps that that I'll at least clue you in a little bit on pumps uh, uh, at least that I have uh, some pump experience and I can pretty well get you what you need as long as it doesn't exceed my capacities uh, my capacities in my machines are the only thing that will govern me and what I can actually do for you on a pump all right until next time get her done <laughs>